Hi guys, Chris Mohan here from the MMA Superfan. Today I'm joined by one of one championship's finest lightweights in the division, Sage Nordgaard. How are you doing today, brother? I'm doing great. I just finished from training and hopping on this call with you. Thank you. Nice, man. I can see your muscles and everything is pumped up. What What were you doing? At oh, <laughs> thanks. Yes. What were you doing at training today? Uh, any? Oh. You know? Uh, yeah, today was uh, more wrestling-based training, so a lot of wrestling, and then uh, afterwards, a little strength and conditioning, and just wrap that up, and now kind of resting for the night. Sweet, sweet. So, right, just want to ask, uh, what's been keeping you busy these days, like, after your win? Ah, you know, I had a injury that I was kind of healing up from, something that was bothering me before the fight, and uh, I just making sure my health's good, and and uh, now I'm looking forward to this next fight coming up. So, yeah, just just been uh, staying busy back in training and and uh, getting ready. Beautiful, man. So, you know, I don't want to, like, spoil the uh, revealing party per se, but um, do you have an idea when your, when your next fight is? You don't, have, you don't have to give us an opening or date, but, yeah, just want to know. Yeah, so, well, I know that since my fight that I had last, uh, May 5th versus Ahmed, afterwards, there's there's been talks of uh, Shinya and I fighting. Uh, so it looks like that's the fight that's going to happen is Shinya Aoki. And, and so looking forward to making that happen. That's the plan. And uh, hopefully beginning of this, this year coming up. All right. All right. Um, I just do not want to spoil the party with one revealing that fight and all that. But tentatively, like, why Shinya Aoki, you know, like there's a lot of other guys in the division that you, that, that, you know, it's bigger names per se, but what, what, what's the pool with Shinya Aoki? Well, as you know, we had a fight set before, um, this was a little while back before I fought Ahmed and, uh, we were set to fight and that fell through. And then I had my fight against Ahmed recently and, you know, it's time to have that fight. It's, it's been in the works for a while now. And, you know, if we fight in the U S or if we fight, even over in Japan, where he's from, I think either one would be uh, would be great because uh, it looks like that's going to be what's going to happen. Nice, yep. Yeah. And I think I've also um, I've watched a couple of your interviews. I think in in the uh, Karen Bryan interview, she she did. She was one of the first few to interview after that fight, and you were speaking about Tokyo, Japan, and all that. Like what besides just fighting there and like the whole history of martial arts. What is the other pool in Japan for you to see? Well, I've always wanted to visit Japan. I've never been. It's I watch a lot of anime also. My brother got me into some anime, and I know a lot of them are Japanese-based. And, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, trying different foods. So I think uh, after the fight, if I, if I have a fight out there in Japan one day, I think post-fight, it'd be amazing to explore all the cities in Japan, try amazing food, eat some really good sushi, which is my all-time favorite food and just enjoy myself. Okay. You know, like since Japan is like, I mean, I, I do not know, maybe you do not have much friends in Japan, but do you think like after a fight with Shinya Yoki, like you would actually ask him like, hey brother, bring me like, to uh, bring me to some of the best food spots or something. Do you think that's something in the works or in the plans? You know, I haven't thought about that, but yeah, absolutely. If If he's down for that, that'd be, that'd be pretty fun. All Have right. Time. Perfect. All right. Let's just revisit your uh, 30, 28 second submission of um, uh, Ahmed Mujtaba. You know, like, what were your thoughts on the fight, on the win? Like, how did you feel after the win? So, Ahmed, he's a, he's a, was a great opponent, um, super skilled fighter. I'm actually really excited to watch him fight uh, the beginning of November. I know he's fighting for one again and really, really happy and excited to watch him fight. And, uh, you know, I, I can't even explain uh, how it felt coming back after almost four years and coming back and having that fight versus Ahmed. My my feelings and my excitement walking out there and hearing the crowd and just being in that environment again was it was absolutely crazy. So it was it was a really uh, exciting moment for me. And I'm very happy the fight turned out the way it did. And, and I got the, the win. Perfect. And you know, I've seen a couple of interviews and podcasts as well that you you how how you were how you were feeling like emotionally after the fight and all. But during that whole um, fight announcement period, right up to your fight, how pivotal was like 
your the people in the close circle around you because you spend the most time with them what were they telling you like you know about fighting did anyone tell you like man maybe you should rethink about it especially after that knockout could you just uh, share yeah absolutely well you know there's been after having a layoff for that long almost four years there were so many people not just not just online but people you hear do comments whatever it might be saying ah you should you shouldn't fight anymore you shouldn't do this you should turn away from the sport because because i had one bad night i had one i had one bad night where i had an injury so you know um, but then you have your close group of people and friends and coaches that you surround yourself with and they know you best and that's what matters. So just having, having positivity and, uh, having a group of good training partners and a great room with great coaches made, made a huge difference for everything. And going into the fight, feeling confident was huge because before having a fight, if you don't have the right mindset, you, you could already have a negative mindset and going out to the fight, you could already be losing before you even enter the fight. So having a solid mindset is super important. So I, I, I guess you're one of, the, one of the firm believers that like, you know, if you do not enter a fight with the right mindset, you've already lost the battle. Is that your POV? I definitely can be, you know, nothing. The thing is, nothing goes as planned. I mean, you have, you have different game plans. You train for all sorts of different scenarios. And very rarely does your game plans go out exactly perfect. So uh, you have to be ready for any moment. So, but having having a positive mindset definitely makes a huge difference. Because if you're going out there thinking you're going to lose, you're going to get beat, you're going to get submitted or knocked out or whatever it might be, or taking all the rounds and you're not going to get a finish, that that can definitely get get you when you're out there. I've seen it happen to guys before. So definitely something that I try to stay away from. Brilliant. All right. And also, you know, like from your days in uh, UFC and into one, you've always brought this like knockout power. So that win against uh, Mujtaba was a bit a bit special. You know, it was a submission win and all. Is that something fans uh, can expect to see more, more of you from like, for, like in the coming years? Yeah, I, I think so. Absolutely. You know, I've been training for years now, my grappling and my jiu-jitsu with a great team, great coaches, Uriah Faber. Fabio, a whole great team, team alpha male and great partners. So that's really improved that level of my game. And uh, I know I haven't got to show too, too much out there fighting, but um, grappling wise, but I could definitely see that for sure. And, you know, if the fight with Shinya, if the fight with Shinya goes through his plan, I believe that uh, he's, he's a legend in the sport. He's known for, uh, for his grappling skills. And he was one of the longest training champs for one championship. So I think I think uh, it's gonna be some fireworks out there for everybody watching. Fair, fair. I think it's. I think just to summarize that fight, it will be a banger. But you know, like recently in one championship, we've seen a couple of mixed rules fight and everything. Like, you know, if right. a lightweight M if a lightweight MMA fight doesn't come true, how does a like mixed rules contest similar to the one that Demetrius Johnson and uh, Rod Tang had sound to you? You versus Aoki, alternate rounds, MMA and grappling. Give me your thoughts. Oh, you know, I'd be down for uh, both. If it was just MMA, I'm down for that. If we were to do even both, if we had just straight submission grappling, I'd be down for that. Um, I always like to test myself, and uh, I think it'd be, uh, it'd be a lot of fun. Fair. All right, and uh, Uraya also said in a – I think he appeared in a recent uh, Karen Bryant interview. He said that, you know, Sage, uh, Sage is super pumped uh, for his comeback fight. He's in the best shape of his life. But you know, like, um, how do you feel like fighting wise right now? Do you do you agree with that? Do you think you're at the best shape of your life? Wait, who uh, who said that? Uh, your coach, man, or are your favor? <laughs> oh, you're right. Yeah, the phone yeah, kind of yeah. cut out. Sorry, oh, sorry. Yes. My uh, pronunciation might be different. <laughs> no, no, you you know your your English is great. Your pronunciation is great. My phone kind of glitched out. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, going into my last fight in incredible shape and, uh, still am. I, I walk around in shape year round, but, uh, obviously coming back and, and having these future fights, my drive to get back out there and just, and keep performing the best I can, making one championship happy, really exciting the fans is, is more than ever before. So, um, I think that's going to continue. All right. And also, uh, the interesting thing about the lightweight division, I feel like, you know, everyone matches up well with each other. There's a lot of guys, a lot of top level guys, like 
top, bottom, anywhere you see it. Like, you know, besides Aoki, like if you were to name maybe one or two more guys, who would you like to face before eventually maybe like squaring or dreaming of a match against Christian Lee? Oh, you know, that'd be that'd be an awesome fight to make in the future. Um, right now, you know, I'm focused on this fight going through with uh, Shinya Aoki and having this fight first. And that's where my mindset's at. But after that, I, I could definitely see that in the future. You know, Christian Lee's Christian Lee's amazing, been an amazing champion, and he's in great style, super exciting. That'd be, that'd be a fun fight. Yeah. Any message to the champ? You know, like he's of course been having a very uh, tough period with the passing of his sister and his uh, uh and Angela also, you know, announcing a retirement. Yeah. Like any message to him? Like before he comes back, it's been a long and tough journey. You've underwent a similar process, uh, somewhat with your comeback from injury and everything. So yeah. Any any words for the champ? Man, um, you know, I don't have, I can't even put myself in his position. You know, I mean, me, like you said, me coming back from an injury, that's totally different. Um, I can't imagine his feelings right now, his whole family of what they're going through with his sister. And, uh, you know, he's, Christian Lee's an amazing, amazing champion and what he's done and how he's performed and just his whole entire career. So I think him coming back is, is something if, if he decides to come back soon, that's going to be, that's going to be uh, awesome, and uh, I really hope you stay strong because I can't imagine having something like that happen with your family. Yeah, very, very nice, very, very nicely put together, man. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Um, you know, bef uh, before you entered uh, one championship, like, you know, Christian Lee was there. I, I think, I believe he still holds the record for most finishes and everything. Is this guy someone that you've always been watched and going like, wow, like, personally, from my POV, Christian Lee and you have like some of the most explosive styles and knockout. So like, do you sometimes watch him and be like, shit, this guy is like, is, is someone like me when I was like making, making my way up my career. Do you see some similarities between you and him? You know, we do have kind of a similar style in a way. Um, and he's, he's explosive and super exciting and, you know, super dominant out there. And since I came into one championship, um, I, I, I believe when I came into one, I don't know if the very first event I got to fly out to and watch if he was competing and also Martin Nguyen, I think. But I got to meet them. I got to talk to them. And, uh, you know, I, they're always very exciting to watch. Christian's always been an exciting fighter to watch. Yeah, I think, I, I believe I was there as well with you. Like maybe uh, you you might not remember, but we were having a chat. It was in the, it was in the hotel, I think. And yeah, you were there as well, like to watch the event. And yeah, you're right. Yes. Christian Nguyen and Christian Lee fighting on that night. I think you even were circle side uh, watching Angela Lee fight as well, in fact. Yes, yes, you're right. Wow, you have a great memory. <laughs> That's amazing. Not that great, man. But yeah, uh, you know, since since I just briefly mentioned about Angela Lee, any words for her, you know, uh, in a post-retirement? And obviously, she has a much bigger mission than MMA right now. Fight story. Any, right. uh, do you see yourself sort of collaborating with her in the future? You know, you've always spoken about like the importance of mental health in past uh, podcasts and interviews. And, and also, you know, you, you sort of come out of that, come out and over, uh, overcome that sort of uh, part in your life as well. Do you see like help? Do you see yourself helping her or any message for her in her retirement? Man, I don't, right now, I don't know any way that I'm able to uh, physically help out uh, what she's going through and what she's doing. But, you know, if we ever do collaborate in the future, I think that'd be something great. And um, all I can say is that, you know, the stuff that she's gone through, um, her sister and stuff that, that I heard her talking about in the, in the, uh, the circle when she announced her retirement, that's a, that's a lot of heavy stuff. And all I can say is that she got to stay strong. I know that, uh, that God's, God's got plans for her future. And, you know, Jesus Christ has her back. So that's just someone that she can lean on. And if she's ever feeling tough times, that's what I kind of lean towards is uh, Jesus Christ. Brilliantly put, man. I think this is why, like, you know, even the last time when Uriah um, spoke to Karen Bryan, and, like, I think there was another podcast where I, I can't remember which podcast it was, but, you know, everyone was just telling, like, damn, Super Sage is, like, uh, the nicest guy they've interviewed. And, you know... Uh, I'm only 15 minutes in this interview, but I feel like, damn, your answers are like so positive, man. It's so heartwarming and yeah, credits to you, man. I love it. <laughs>
And all right, oh, thanks. Just back, just back to your career a bit. You know, you're only okay. You're still only twenty seven, despite missing out key years of your of your development as a fighter. You know, like, do you think that's that injury setback and after that, uh, COVID nineteen as well. Do you think it sort of uh, robbed you of the prime years of your career? No, I don't at all. You know, I feel, I feel like I didn't get robbed of any of my prime years. Um too much because you're speaking about prime years i've heard from many different fighters and world champs friends that i've grown up with that your prime is when you're in your 30s so i might have had some years where i was healing up from my injury and uh time that i was kind of getting back into training but having to heal vice versa but you know being back i'm only 27 and i've got i've got so much left in my career and uh i believe that my primes in my 30s as i've heard so I think there's there's a a lot that I can do with my fight career. Indeed, indeed, man. So yeah, uh, I have to ask you this as well. You know, after Tyron uh, showed you his spice mix for cooking, uh, for cooking chicken, how much have you improved in the kitchen, man? <laughs> I can tell you what. I definitely spice my chicken now. I spice both sides. It's good, <laughs> much better. Before oh, it was cool. just plain chicken. That's it. <laughs> How was your chicken recipe before this? Like any what 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 was the difference compared to like now? Oh, before before this, I had no recipe. I thought that was it for making chicken. It was just I either boiled it or I just threw it in the pan and just cooked it on both sides. Now I'm grilling chicken. I've got I've got like making little thin slices, air frying it with different seasoning. Coming like a little chef over here. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. So like you know. Is it more, is it sort of more enjoyable right now? Like with the whole like weight cut ordeal and everything, like, you know, having more flavorful chicken per se. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, that's definitely uh, more enjoyable. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, so I just want to ask as well about uh, possibility of a match against another uh, lightweight MMA legend. You know, you've, you've said that you won uh, Shinya Aoki. But somewhere in the division, right. like you also have another former lightweight title holder, Edward Falayang, another brilliant striker and everything. Like, do you see yourself potentially like wanting a fight against him as well, somewhere down the line? You know, that's up to one championship. I can I could definitely see that in the future. You know, uh he's was a world champion. He's one of the top guys in the lightweight division. And uh I I could definitely see that in the future. I mean, like you said, right now I'm focused on Shinya because that's the fight right now, but but uh, I guess we'll see. Perfect, perfect. And, you know, like, just want to get a bit of your thoughts on, like, the rest of the guys, you know, like, uh, have you, like, seen much about uh, Yoshiro uh, Akiyama, the guy they call Sexyama? Yes. Oh, yes. He's jacked, huh? I saw him on a, I saw him on a TV show recently, too. He looks great. Yeah, yeah. He's still, like, in yep. peak, he's still in peak physical condition, you know? Like, Sage yes. versus... Uh, Yoshira, uh, Sage versus uh, Sexyama. How does that sound to you, man? Uh, you know, I can see that in the future, too. I think that could be a very exciting fight. He's he's All of his fights are exciting. I watched him versus Shinya Aoki uh, not too long ago, and that was a fun one to watch. All right. Fun, fun. Good answer, man. And also, you know, um, just going back about your training a bit, you, you know, you mentioned a bit about, like, your grappling being improved and everything. Like, what what is like the main fundamental difference between like training, striking, and grappling? You know, I think the thing that I was really missing a lot, um, since I got into the sport so young and started fighting professionally, and um, was just the amount of time, mat time. So having those live goes constantly and the constant drilling, because when I started off fighting professionally, I was, and even when I came into the UFC before one. I was going to school to be an engineer at the same time. So my, my training, there wasn't really much training. Uh, I was training at a grappling gym and doing what I could, but it, it wasn't, I wasn't surrounded by a bunch of professional fighters and trying to, or getting to really hone my skills and make myself better. So I think that mat time and the live goes have really made a huge difference. All right. And also, yeah, just, just adding a bit more about the training part, you know, like, like maybe, eight or seven years ago when you sort of like first uh first were like coming up in your career to now like how much more has even the people within your gym improved over the years 
Oh, they even the people in my gym have improved so much. I mean, you're looking at you're looking at uh, a bunch of different fighters that have been there for a long time, top guys. Uh, Team Alpha Male, Josh Emmett, one of the top guys in the UFC. Um, you got Chris Gonzalez. He fights for Bellator, one of the top fighters in the world. You have Ryan Loder, one of the best, one of the best wrestlers. You have I can go on with so many different names, um, so many guys that are the best of the best out there um, that that have improved in their top ten now. And and uh, it's like as you watch even the sport, just even one championship over the last several years, all the fighters won championship mixed martial arts it's constantly improving in a level of experience and and techniques they're always improving so you look back like five years ago versus now or 10 years ago versus now and and the amount of techniques it's it's crazy how much uh everything's improved all right speaking of improvement you know like if you've ever watched your own um videos or your old tapes back then what's been some of the biggest improvements that you've under undergone yourself over the last like decade or so I would say, I would say one of the biggest improvements is transitions. So it's not just straight boxing, not just straight uh, wrestling or straight jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, Muay Thai, just the transitions in between the strikes with the, with the clinchings, the grappling, the wrestling, those in between times, that's, that's been a huge difference. Brilliant. And, you know, like speaking about your physique, you know, like you've always been in, like, I can't remember a time when I've ever seen Sage not cut without muscles, without a, without a really good physique. <laughs> and this is something that's always uh, sort of been a misconception. Like, you know, like when you pack on more muscles, like it's harder for you to fight and all that. But can you care to elaborate how do you maintain like a very decent amount of muscle mass at the same time being very fluid or light whenever you spar or whenever you fight? Yeah, I think I think it's more based off of my training. I eat very clean. So the kinds of foods that I eat are always very, very strict year round. Um, I do have cheat meals where I get to go. I'll go eat all the sushi I can eat, all you can eat or have some chocolate here and there. But, you know, I think my diet is very important with with uh, my muscles and my speed and my strength that I have. Also, um, I'm big into lifting very heavy. So I try to lift very heavy um, for my strength. And and I do a lot of explosive stuff. Since I was a kid growing up in karate and sport martial arts, for everything from tumbling, gymnastics, to every every kind of flip you can possibly imagine. Um, it's just part that's that's transferred over into fighting MMA now. And uh, I think that's what that's how you kind of, I guess, maintain that explosiveness. Brilliant. It, it's It's funny because like, over the last like few years, I haven't seen you do all those crazy stuff, you know, like you like flying with a flying knee, like right at the top of the bag and all that. You should probably add that, add that back into your social media, man. It's been a while. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. Good thinking. I'll take that advice. <laughs> all right. Cool, man. Um, Sorry. Just want to ask, do you have like at least another about like 10 minutes or so? I do, I do not want to take a lot of your time. I know you want to have your dinner and all, but yeah. Yes. Yes. I could do that. All right. Absolutely. Brilliant. All right, thank you so much. So yeah, uh, you know, you one has also revealed that uh, US, uh, uh, there's like about four shows in the United States next year. And I think Raya Faber himself said that, you know, like you're sort of, you're sort of willing to take on one or two maybe. But in your own opinion, like with four shows in the United States next year, like do you think you want to compete in all four if, if there's enough rest in between? I think that'd be I think that'd be something really cool, you know. Definitely, definitely a couple for sure. But if I could do all four, I mean, theoretically, if you have four shows next year, they're probably spaced out every three months. So, obviously, I gotta take one fight at a time. But uh, but I think that'd be that'd be really fun, and I can't wait to hear where they are in the U.S. too. I know um, one was talking about a while back if I if I'm right about this, was having a fight maybe in New York. Madison Square Garden and then also I think there was talks in Hawaii um and then obviously they had the first one in Colorado but I, I'm I'm really excited to see where the first one's going to be at perfect in your perfect world man like where which city or state would you like to compete uh in one against anyone you know like where where would you like it to be and let, who would you like it against okay uh you know okay so if we're talking the U.S. 
I would say maybe my home home state of Texas. It's one of the biggest, biggest uh, states in the U.S. I got a ton of fans out there, a ton of friends, ton of family. I think that'd be really cool. Or even California. You know, I've been training and, and having all my training camps in California. And uh, there's some great venues out here and a lot of people that will come. Yeah, I think California sounds good, you know, especially if you have like the guy himself, Mr. California Kid, the California Kid. That's perfect. It doesn't get better than that. <laughs> exactly, man. Exactly. So, yeah, uh, you know, um, speaking like still just meant uh, talking about uh, one's expansion in the US and all that. How did you like personally feel like about one fight night then, like maybe like one week after the whole event, like re-watching the whole event on YouTube or, you know, on Amazon Prime Video? Like what what did you feel like about the event? Because you've been involved with one if, uh, in promoting the uh, stuff in the US, even before COVID, I remember you had an open workout and right. stuff. Yeah. So how did your, how, what was your view on one finally landing in the United States? That was that was super exciting for me. Um, one of the biggest things when I signed with One Championship, uh, a huge factor was uh, the future of One fighting in the U.S. So to actually have that happen, that that was uh, amazing for me. And plus to have my first fight back after so long, to have it in the U.S. was was something that I really enjoyed. It made me feel comfortable. I had friends and family there, and uh, and I think it was awesome. Perfect, man. And, you know, uh, like with one being the home of martial arts and you, uh, especially with your whole like karate and taekwondo sort of background, do you feel these other stand-up uh, martial arts should deserve the same spotlight as Muay Thai and, and kickboxing does in one championship? You're asking if karate does? If it should? Yeah, if karate should be given the, a similar spotlight like Muay Thai and kickboxing. Oh, you know, Muay, Muay Thai and kickboxing is something that I'm really happy that one championship does, though, because you uh, you you look back. Uh, I heard someone talking about it recently. I don't know who it was saying that if it wasn't for one championship, bringing Muay Thai and kickboxing and having their fight in the U.S. and getting the U.S. fans involved, it was kind of like Muay Thai and kickboxing uh, was losing uh, relevance almost. And I think it's something that now us fans are now hooked on and they're so excited and they love it they love muay thai kickboxing i think karate is very exciting too i think that there's it's just totally different style i think if you could have them all i think i think that would be that would be awesome having every single one yeah and i and just going back to your answer just now uh it was actually joe rogan who said like muay thai has the biggest yes. potential in in the world you know and it's right. something that one has slowly started to bring into the United States. And also, you know, of that, like there's been sort of a debate like about the whole striking system and all that uh, striking level between a UFC and one championship. But in your opinion, you know, like, do you believe that one truly houses like the best strikers across any martial arts? I mean, I would say so. If you're looking on, if you're looking at the finish rate, um, I know UFC doesn't have Muay Thai and kickboxing separately. It's just MMA. So it's it's a little bit hard to uh, say exactly since you're talking about different sports. But if you look on paper, the amount of world champions in Muay Thai, kickboxing, and just all the sports for mixed martial arts with one championship is greater than every organization in the world. So, I mean, if you're looking at that statistic, I would definitely say so. Brilliant answer, man. And, you know, mm -hmm. you're a knockout specialist as well. Like, how far do you see yourself coming back and, you know, bringing the excitement, bringing the heat to the fans, you know? Oh, definitely. You know it. I'm always... So that's the thing is I'm always trying to excite the fans. That's one of the things that gets me so excited is making the fans have a great time and something memorable and wanting to watch you fight next. So, so I'm definitely, every fight that I have, I'm looking to go out there and I'm trying to put on a great show and finish my opponent any way possible. So that's something for sure. That's always going to be the case. Brilliant. All right, man. I wouldn't take too much of your time, maybe like five minutes more, but you know, I just no want to wrap up the interview with your thoughts and some of the top top guys, top fighters in one, you know? Okay. Like, have you ever uh, kept in touch with uh, Mikey Musumeshi? Yes. Yes, right. I saw him uh, do submission grappling recently against uh, Shinya Oki. 
Yep, yep. All right. Yeah. And and if I mean if you share the conversation with him, you know, like what makes him so special? Because he's like like another Mr. Nice Guy, you know, somewhat like you. I've seen him uh in interviews, I've interviewed him before, but he's an absolute beast in the circle, man. Like, how how is he like in your opinion? Well, you know, I've only met him one time, I believe, and uh it was actually for my fight, and he was extremely nice, uh, very nice, very kind. And uh, he's talking about eating pizza. And I was thinking, man, that sounds so good. I, I love pizza. So maybe one day we'll get some pizza together. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, one championships US show in 2024. Like you and him yep. eating pizza. In, if it happens, <laughs> there you go. If it happens in New York, man, that's a bonus. I think, I think my oh, that's perfect. Is there. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah. And you, and you know, like, I just want to ask about his level of submission grappling. It's sometimes just insane to watch, you know, but what, what's your take? Right. On, what's your take on his uh, grappling uh, level? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's, man, you watched him fight uh, or submission grappling against uh, Shinyoki and getting the finish that he did. You know, I, I would love to get to test myself someday in the future and, uh, and, and do some submission grappling. I think that'd be really, really something exciting for me. And, and I think that, um, I've been trained so hard in the grappling. I think I think it'd be it'd be great. I think the fans will love to see that too in the future. And I think Mikey's Mikey's submission grappling is is uh, incredible. All right, just moving a bit onto like uh, different arts as well. Like you know, you have uh, Tawan Chai and Superbon. Like they're about to fight as well at one fight night seventeen. Like like, do you know much about these guys? And what's your take on this matchup? What uh, I so. I do, and I have no idea how this fight's gonna go. Who's gonna win? This is it's gonna be crazy. Uh, how many weeks away are we now to that fight? I believe that fight is, is that, that fight is in December, so I think there's still like about a little over a month, months, maybe. Yeah, seven weeks. Okay, okay, yeah. I, you know, they're both very exciting fighters, that's for sure. Talk about knockout artists. I need to, I need to go and uh watch both of them watch a bunch of their fights because uh they're always very exciting and i i can't i don't really know who's gonna go out there and take this fight and win but um i can make a better uh prediction after i go watch a bunch of them thank you man and also you know yep. speaking about uh one fight night 16 you know we have some bangers on the card as well tyro uh, tyro tolo like uh goes up to like sort of become the inaugural one wealth weight submission grappling world champion any message for your fellow American athlete, man? Oh yeah, man. Ty, Ty's got to keep it up. He's he's crushing it out there, and uh, you know that's that's amazing accomplishment. And uh, I got to I got to meet him, and he was he was extremely nice, you know, and got to talk for a little bit, and and uh, I'm I'm excited to keep watching him compete. Another two guys uh, who's really fluid in the striking department meet in the main event. Of course, uh, it's. Uh, Fabricio Andrade versus uh Jonathan Haggerty. What do you what's your take for that fight, man? That's a banger. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a banger for sure. You know, that's that's gonna be talk about fireworks. That's gonna be crazy. I feel like I feel like someone's getting someone's getting knocked out. <laughs> so yeah, I think that they're uh some of the top fighters in the whole entire world. They're striking is top level. And I, I feel like uh I'm I'm gonna watch I'm gonna watch their uh their fight they're going to have and uh, try to analyze it so that way I can get a few tips too. Who would you cite for that fight, man? Like, how do you envision it to end for both men, maybe? If you can't pick one, like, how do you see a path to victory for both men? Man, that's tough. It's one of those things that I need to go watch. I need to go watch a little bit more footage of both of them to really make an educated guess. All right, fair, fair. And, you know, like, Another another explosive guy like who's always been at one, uh, wrote down Jit Mongnon, you know. I don't know whether he watched his yes. fight Super League. He suffered his first defeat in one championship. Like, what's your take from that match? Uh, from that match, and like, what what's your idea or opinion on both fighters? You know, they showed that they were the best, and the fight really. Lived oh up. yeah, you know, Rod Rodting so uh so took the fight, still fought, and uh, super like he he missed weight by quite a bit. What, I forgot what the weight was. It was wasn't it over like five pounds, or yes, it was quite a bit. So I mean that that shows you uh, Rod Tag's mentality right there and how tough he is and to go out there and and perform how he did. Two of the best guys right there, 
And, uh, you know, you're saying that's his first defeat in one championship. I mean, that's, you know, I, I'm, I'm really impressed with Rod Tang and also Super Lek. They're both very impressive. But, yep. Yeah, of course, like Rotang's other defeat was to Demetrius Johnson, but that was in the stand-up uh, department, you know, so I, I, right. I see it his first defeat. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right, I get it. All right, man, cheers. Uh, you know, uh, just one or two final questions, like any final message to your fans, to your followers, like, like yeah, to anyone in general, man, just it's all your... Yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess, uh, I guess a message to you <laughs> right now thank you for the advice on uh maybe doing some more um acrobatic things like kicking jumping up kicking the bag or kneeing it stuff like that i'll definitely have to do some of that and then uh i just want to tell everybody thank you thank you for following me and um uh, keeping up with my fights i'm excited to be back um really excited to keep having a great career with one championship being exciting and uh really looking forward to this next fight hopefully we're announcing some news here soon Brilliant, man. You know, uh, you've always been a fun one to watch. Inspirational inside and outside the circle. Um, wishing you all the best. Congratulations again on your win, man. And, you know, yeah, I just can't wait to see you back in action, bro. <laughs> awesome. Yes, definitely. Thank you. All right. Cheers, Sage. Thank you again from the all MMA right. fan. Yeah, thank you. All right. See you soon. All right, see you, man. Bye.